Hello everyone and welcome to my 500th YouTube video. Yay! I've made many many videos. Uh, a lot of them could use a lot more polish. Uh, I would be the first to admit that. But I hope to make this one at least a little bit special. And we are going to be doing not really a new series per se because it's not going to be a sequence of events like uh, one of my normal series. Uh, but we are going to be doing some experiments. Experiments in future technology. And in order to do that, I have installed uh, KSP Interstellar. I've got Near Future. I've got uh, some other things like uh, Kerbal Foundries involved because anti-grav is cool. And uh, we are going to be doing things in real solar systems. So this is Earth that we are on right now. And we've got other realism overhaul stuff, real fuels, etc. Deadly reentry far, as you can see down there. And so, uh, yeah, we've got lots and lots of stuff to work with. And so here we are with, um, these things always pop out whenever I put them on procedural tanks. But yeah, we've got the Saber. Uh, this is in line with my, whenever I'm playing a real sci-fi game, I tend to name ships after pointy uh, weapons. And that's, that's from, I think that's from Wing Commander. I, I remember Wing Commander having dart saber, broadsword, that sort of thing. And so it's from my old, old Wing Commander days. And so I still name them like that. And so yeah, this is the saber for me. Uh, I don't think it resembles the Wing Commander saber. There was a saber, right? I'm, I'm not misremembering this. But anyway, uh, and this is my proper sci-fi ship. Uh, when uh, I want to personally go around, punting around the, the universe, or really just uh, Kerbal System. But not the Kerbal System, Soul System. And uh, so let's get out the Delta V and uh, I'll talk about it briefly, but we'll take it up quickly enough. It's got a lot of thrust to weight ratio, as you can see, but that's that's not all present on the ground, I found. I'm not entirely sure how the antimatter stuff works, but anyway, speaking of which, this has two antimatter reactors and uh, thermal nozzles attached to them so that they uh, then produce the thrust that, they, that we need. We've got antimatter tanks. And they're partially filled, and that is by me uh, tweaking the craft file. Uh, though I do have an excuse, I'll get to that at some point. We have an antimatter production station in orbit. Uh, that is a story element. I didn't put it to orbit piece by piece. It was hyper-edited there, but we'll get to that. Uh, that will be Space Station Liberty, and we are aiming to rendezvous with it. This will get up uh, legitimately, obviously. Um, now we've got uh, water tanks. Basically the fuel for this is water, if I could actually show that. Water. Lots of water. So we've got water tanks there. The B9 wings are filled with water. We've got water, water, water. And that's what fuels this. Basically, I guess the antimatter reactor uh, splits the water into hydrogen and oxygen, burns that, uh, it sort of disassembles it. Probably uh, doesn't even go through the elemental thing, just it ends up some sort of plasma or something and shoots it out the back at really high velocity. But uh, the, the actual ISP on this isn't huge. It, it's still much better than normal uh, hydrogen-oxygen mix. But um, yeah, it's, it's uh, and that's thanks to the acceleration provided by the antimatter. Of course, stuff really goes out the back fast when it encounters antimatter. Okay, but those two antimatter reactors are not the only reactors involved. We have a uh, fission reactor here, and that is providing electric electricity and uh, what what does it call it? I forget the name. Uh, megawatts, megawatts, uh, in order to get our warp drive fueled with exotic matter. So that's going on as well. Actually, it's a lot easier to fuel a warp drive than an antimatter reactor. I've just found. Uh, we do have these huge radiators and uh, they are not enough like this but actually once we get into space you'll see uh, they are pretty much enough. We can shut down the antimatter reactors for a long time anyway and a lot of the heat from the fission reactor actually goes into the warp drive so we don't have to worry about that. The warp drive will absorb all that. Okay. So, with all that said, I think uh, we want to see this launch, obviously, and we will let Jeb do it, because I am confident. I have done testing on this, obviously. You don't get something like this without testing. We are going off of the runway, and we are going to try to get 
try to get them to orbit around Earth. And then uh, eventually rendezvous. I'm going to keep these episodes short because we're doing little tests. And so there's just a test to see that this can get into orbit properly. And then uh, you'll notice no docking port. And so to refuel at the station, which is what the station is for, of course, uh, we do have the pipe endpoints from KAS. All right, so let's take her out. Okay, here we are on a runway, and it's best not to completely trust the Delta V readings. In the VAB we saw 16,000 or something like that. That's not true. Uh, here we see 4,266. That's not true either. Uh, for some reason it even reads the vacuum time differently. That's that's not correct. Okay, so you see here we, we have a thousand units of antimatter, which our, our orbiting station can easily provide, by the way. Uh, so that is not wrong and uh, waste heat here you can see diminishing because uh, the warp reactor is getting its exotic matter and also some is being dissipated by the radiator here we haven't activated our antimatter though so let's get uh, our antimatter pumping we do not need full thrust on takeoff because we've got a lot of acceleration with this and basically we're going to be launching into a, a 60 degree pitch up attitude all right the key thing here is to not scrape off the warp drive, obviously. Here we go. Um, wow, it is a little, little bit dark, isn't it? I think it'll be all right. Hmm. Yeah, let, let, let's launch like this. Uh, we'll be launching into the dawn. It'll get brighter. Okay, here we go. Very important that the gear stays stable, but we're not going to go very fast before rotating. It's a very, very aerodynamically happy craft, actually. Come on, get up there. All right. I should have showed you that in uh, in the v, uh, in the SPH. It's very good aerodynamically, very stable. And we can add some more thrust here now that we're sort of pitching up like this. We do end up getting some SAS oscillations, but that's not a big deal. There's no point going too fast in this phase, but anyway, here we are. And of course, I forgot to mention antimatter collectors because, well, if you're stranded in space and you can't get to the station, you'd want to at least get a little bit of antimatter back every now and again just so that you have some hope of making a way back home. There's a lot of food, water, and oxygen available, though actually the water is being depleted here, but we can replenish it from our other water supplies. For some reason, the engines are draining from that tank first. Okay, so food, water, and oxygen. Uh, Jeb has 234 days, really. So, pretty good. Space Station Liberty only has 84 days, but it has 10 crews, so it'll have to have some regular supplies. And I'm sure by the time we get antimatter technology, we'll be able to supply a station properly. I think that would be a thing. So this got to be looking towards the future. Ah, I forgot to check the relative inclination to the station. I hope we're close. I'm, I'm going to leave that as a surprise. Maybe we'll have to develop it. But then I'm going to be turning into a series. If I'm going to start doing a sequence of events like developing a tug, not a tug, uh, a fuel transport vehicle to... Uh, fuel this thing up. Uh, I'll have to consider that. I just want to do craft design, honestly. And this is a nifty little guy. You could definitely see going around the universe in something like this, right? Really, if we wanted to be efficient, we should be pushing 4Gs through most of this after we pass the region of heating. Let's get into a lower orbit. Let's say 300 kilometers. The station's at 400. Well, Jeb has to be loving this. Uh, his cockpit isn't that great, though. I love how the radiators sort of glow. It looks a bit iffy once the radiator panels are extended, though. 
Now let's see, anything else I didn't mention? Oh yes, I haven't tested this for re-entry. So I don't actually know whether it can re-enter the atmosphere safely or not. Probably not. Um, most things can't. Uh, if you just design them in a shape other than a capsule. And this is a very interesting shape. This gotta be, the warp drive has gotta be like really delicate. So I'm not sure if it could survive re-entry like that. Then again, maybe it's used to getting very, very hot. I don't know. For now, I'm not gonna fire up the warp drive, by the way. Just in case you were wondering. We'll lay off on that. So this is just a change of pace, obviously. I have done many, many regular rockets, and I am a sci-fi writer. Uh, so this is the sort of thing I normally have in my stories. Antimatter reactors and... and uh, not warp drives. I use hyperspace drives, but that's just my thing. Okay, well, we're getting pretty close to orbit now. Let's take a look at our situation. Oh, that's the worst. Oh dear. We've got a big inclination difference from the from the station and we're going too high now. Let's cut that out. Actually, you know what? We could boost to a higher orbit and then do inclination change from further out. Do I, do I have enough delta V for that though? This is just bad planning on my part, but then again, probably at the point where Cape Canaveral actually hit the orbit of the station, we'd be in the dark. The station is at an inclination to match the moon, by the way. So, and obviously that's intended. That's going to be helpful for future things. But yeah, I think I'm just going to boost to a higher orbit and then see if I can uh, allow that to help us out getting into the right inclination. Let's set as target. 47.4 degrees is bad. That is bad. Even with 2000 delta V left, that's not good. Okay, so deliberately going into a high apoapsis here. Yep. It's enough to flatten it out, but it's not enough to match the station. Okay, forget this. I am going to have to develop a drone ship that is specifically designed to refuel my little saber here. But let's get this into orbit first. So we'll do that, uh, maybe not in the next episode, but in a subsequent episode. So this is just going to be a quickie where I am going to show off this little guy and give a little taste for future events and designs but we do want to uh, have this float around the soul system oh well of course uh, smart ASS can't do anything because this doesn't really have much reaction wheel control if we do have to use RCS uh, yeah, let's let our, uh, smart ASS do that um, so yes, we do have RCS fuel. We have good old-fashioned monomethyl hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide. I'm not completely neglecting standard stuff here. And we probably need to deploy the radiators now. I, I think I have them action group, but I actually forgot which action group I've got them on. And there's a lot of stuff going on with this vessel. So there we go, radiator is fully deployed, and you can see the waste heat is depleting fine. Possibly after the warp engine is full of exotic matter, it'll, the waste heat might get to be a problem, but I'm not sure about that. Okay, so we are prograde, let's get into full orbit now. I'm not too sure that antimatter engines would be fully throttleable or could restart that quickly, but we're gonna we're gonna go with that for now. Okay, 
So here we are, and this is in in radiating mode, the saber. And so I'll think about how to refuel this guy because obviously we missed our transit to the station. We'll 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 bring something else up to the station. Don't worry, I've got other designs in order. But I think this it was a suitable 500th episode because it is something totally different from what I normally do, and uh, antimatter and all that. When have I actually used antimatter like this? Never. So, yep, I think this is satisfactory. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you like this design. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.